This is going to be a crazy video. I have managed to get hold of some of the good, good championship tea times, as well as the prize fund, which is seriously, seriously crazy. Now, if you watch a lot of YouTube golf, you will know exactly who good, good are. They have literally taken over the internet and we know the caliber of golfer that they have. Now, this is crazy. When I first heard about this championship, I thought it was going to be like an influencer championship, like the likes of Rick Shields is organizing towards the end of this year. But I was very, very wrong. Now, let me go through the exact credentials of this tournament, which is seriously, seriously crazy. So you go on the website and you have to enter, send an entry form, and then you have an email if you are selected. I'm not selected. Maybe if they do it again though, I will at least try and enter and see if I get selected. So this is the exact wording that Good Good have on their website when you're going through to find the entry form. The professional golf tournament is designed to find the next great golfer and follow their journey to the next level. The event will be held in Scottsdale, Arizona at the West Kincaid Golf Club, 8th to 11th of May. The event is free to enter and we will have a $100,000 purse, to which the winner will receive $50,000. We know the Good Good community has a fantastic talent, and we want to find the best, and we want to help support them in their professional career. So, straight away, this is sort of going towards me as Good Good are creating their own mini tour. Now, what I say is mini tour, you have obviously the PJ Tour, DP World Tour, you have Corn Ferry Tour, PJ of Americas. You have these smaller tours to the upper echelon tours. But mini tours are ones that are just sort of, I would classify, well, in their area specifically. So it could just be in their state. We have them just in our county here in the UK. They are on a small level, usually one to three day events. Now, I think Good Good could take this to the next level. Now, the players that I thought were entering this were the likes of the YouTube community who are very, very good golfers. So, the likes of Good Good, maybe Zach Radford, a lot of the other golfers, um, even Fat Perez in there. Some very, very good golfers that we see on YouTube week in, week out. But this is not. We're looking at guys here that are probably have been D1 golfers in college. We're looking at guys that have probably played in PJ Tour events qualifying on Monday qualifiers. We are looking at guys here that potentially could be playing on the PJ Tour in the next three to five years. And I think what they're trying to create here is awesome. So just to give you a bit of background, like my story was when I first turned pro, my idea was to play as a top professional on the DP World, European Tour at the time. Wasn't good enough. Now, one of the hardest things when you turn pro is finding sponsors. Some people find it easy, depending what golf club you're at, but finding sponsors. I had to sort of sell shares in myself and raise money, and then every time I won some money, I would pay it back out to the shareholders. Now, this is a very, very hard concept, and I think you either make or break, because when you're playing at mini tour level, usually, I mean, this is a free entry fee. When you're usually playing, like, you're entering, like, £150 prize money, like... If you don't win, you don't finish in the top three, you're not making any money. So it's absolutely awesome what they're trying to create. Supporting somebody financially, offering tournaments with an incredible amount of money. You win this, right? You win this. This sets you up for a year to two years. Guaranteed. Like, you can afford to play. You can afford to eat well. You can afford to train well. You can afford to be at the best place to give you the best chance of performing. Now, let me go into a little bit further exactly how the tournament is going to work. The event will take place over four days. May the 8th will be an 18-hole, 63-man qualifier to determine the 12-man field competing for the $100,000 purse. You've got 63 guys going out, all competing for 12 spots. Now, imagine these 12 spots are going to be then going out in three balls, to which we're going to see them go in reverse order as the rounds go on. And this is going to literally break the internet. So many people are going to watch this. And I can see this concept being repeated week in, week out. And offering us a chance to watch and get a glimpse of the next PGA Tour players. And I'm going to tell you right now. A player that plays in this, and if they do it again, a potentially a player that plays in this in the future, will be featuring on the PGA Tour. 
I'm going to say right now, like, the standard and the caliber of player they're going to attract with this, not just the good, good guys, like, the people outside it, people we haven't even heard of yet, are going to be awesome. Like, literally awesome. May the 9th will be a content day to shoot with 12 competitors and good good in preparation for the main event. All 12 competitors will be guaranteed prize money and good good will cover their airfare and hotel. And on May 10th and 11th, the 12 man field will play 18 holes each day with the lowest cumulative score taking home the $50,000 first place prize. Wow, wow, wow. What do you think on this, by the way? Get down in the comments. Do you think this is an absolutely great idea or is this something that you're not? not bothered about you'd rather just watch the top stuff i'm gonna say right now i'm gonna probably watch this more than i watch a pga tour event like this is seriously cool in my opinion so let's go through some of the tea time so here on the screen you can see that they're starting at 6 37 a.m and they're finishing just after half nine now looking down this list there's not many names that i have heard of until you get to the last two tea times 9 28 and 9.37 a.m. So remember, 63 guys competing for 12 spots. Now, the reason why I think they put these last two tee times are like of Zach Radford, Badly Dark, Ben Hayden, and Fat Perez at the end, they're obviously going to be shooting some content. So shooting some content takes some time, and we don't want them to hold up the rest of the field. Now, looking at these names right now, like I know all these guys are capable of shooting under par, but are they going to be able to qualify? Now, I say it this way because if you've got guys who are qualified for a PJ Tour event and a Monday qualifying, you've got guys that have played mini tour events, you've got guys that have played at the sort of higher echelon of player. And I mean that in the way of like, I think of like Zach Rapper as a great guy, um, great golfer, but maybe not at the level of a Monday qualifier. Like Monday qualifiers, these guys go out and shoot seven, eight under one round like i played in these events i've done an open qualifying here and you always have those guys that shoot seven eight maybe even nine under at each event now just going back to before i do a little bit of a prediction here and go through these tee times a little bit more again 637 set to 758 and then we've got 807 that there is a serious amount of competition here going through these tee times now just going back to the whole mini tour and how does it work so essentially if you play on the pj tour or the european tour it is so tough we see guys right and i can say this from experience i carried on the european tour for three years carried for a really good friend of mine tom murray he got his european tour card now getting your card is the easiest bit i say that it is not easy the hardest bit is keeping it like, it's obviously hard getting it. It's very, very competitive. But staying out there and competing is really, really tough. Like, you've got to think of it this way, right? You go out week in, week out. Like, as a rookie, you've never played these golf courses before. You're going up against guys that technically probably don't have as good a game as you. But you're going out trying to compete against them when they've got the course knowledge. Think of the Masters, right? They always say knowledge helps. They always say knowing where the slopes are, where to hit it on the green, within the green, is a really big thing. Well, that is the same week in, week out. So giving, having a chance to play and trying to keep your card on the DP World Tour, PJ Tour, is seriously, serious tough. It's seriously, seriously stressful. And you've got to be able to adapt. You've got to be able to play week in, week out, different golf courses. And sometimes I think you've either got it or you've not. Tom has 100% got it in my opinion, but it's just getting the right break and it's playing right at the right time, right? You've also got the debate on categories. Sometimes your category doesn't get the big events. You get the smaller events. Therefore, you've got to play well, better for longer. You play well on the big event, you could secure your card after one week. So going back to the Good Good Championship, what do I think the score's going to be? Well, obviously, as I've just said, you're going to have guys that are going to go seriously low, like seven, eight, sort of six under. So I'm going to sort of say... Right now, I think two under, yes, two under gets in a playoff. I think you have maybe four to five, possibly six guys that go really, really low. And the rest of them are sort of going to be all around that sort of one to three under mark. Two under getting you in a playoff. Like the likes of Zach Radford, very, very easily doable. Fat Perez, very, very easily doable on a very good round. But I don't see many of the influencers getting into this event. And I mean that by the 12 spots playing for the $50,000 first prize. I know it sounds harsh, but 
I didn't realise the likes of the competition that was going into this, and this is seriously, seriously high, and I can't wait to watch it. So let's go through what the prize fund is. Now, this is absolutely staggering. Now, as we've already established, its first place is $50,000. Okay, so let's do this in reverse order. 12th place gets you 1300 Now, remember, if you qualify and you get into the 12, all your hotel and expenses are covered by good good. So you're making money here. You're making profit. 11th gets 1,400, 10th 1,500, 9th 1,600, 8th 1,700, 7th 2,000, 6th 2.5, 5th 3,000, 4th 5,000, 3rd 10,000, 2nd 20,000. Like even that 2nd and 3rd could really change some of these guys' career. 100%. And obviously, first at $50,000. Now, you're going to look at that right now and you go, wow, that is heavily weighted to 1, 2, and 3. 100%. That's how it works on mini tour level. Like, you finish in the top 5, you're making some good money, potentially for a day's work, if it's a day event, potentially for a three-day event. But you finish outside that, like, I know obviously in this case, these guys' expenses are being covered, but you finish outside the top 3, 5, usually you're not going to make money. That's why this concept for Good Good is going to be massive. They can monetize this through the views they're going to get on YouTube. So therefore, they can afford to pay ridiculous amounts of money. Therefore, they can afford to cover expenses, which gives the chance for us to watch some great golf. But it also gives a chance for some players to really have a chance and have a shot at following their dream if they can't afford the sponsors. Like, I seriously think this is a mega, mega concept, and I can't wait to watch. Good, good. You have smashed this. Now, what do you think the qualifying score will be? Do you agree? Do you think it will be a minus two gets in the playoff? I'd love to know your thoughts on this, so please do get down in the comments. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and also, we bring you all the breaking news here on Bat9 Film, so don't forget to turn on the bell. Thanks for watching.